The passage we read in the very beginning, His warning to us. Look at this. Scoffers will come in the last day walking according to their own lust and saying, where's the promise for his com- of His coming? He said there are going to be scoffers, people who make fun of Christianity. Have you ever seen that? You have? Now when I was a kid, nobody made fun of Christianity publicly. But I'll tell you what, you turn on a late night talk show nowadays, they'll make fun of Christianity, won't they? They'll mock it, they'll laugh about it, they'll criticize it. It doesn't bother them at all to make mockery of Christianity. And that's what he says, there are going to be scoffers these last days. And these scoffers, they're going to walk according to their own lust, and they're going to go, oh yeah, God's coming back, huh? He's coming back. And he says, for since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget that by the Word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water by which the world that then existed perished being flooded with water. He said, you remember what happened with Noah? He said, another one's coming. Now do you remember when Noah got out of the ark what God put in the rainbow? Or <laughs> what God put in the rainbow? What God put in the sky? <laughs> he put a rainbow in the sky, right? And I'm going to tell you something. When God did that, rainbow didn't mean LGBT. Rainbow meant a promise of God. That's what it meant. And He said, I won't flood the world anymore. I'll never destroy the world with a flood ever again. But He said, in the last days, people are going to scoff and they're going to mock your Christianity. They're not going to mock God They're not going to follow. He said, but the heavens and the earth which are now preserved by the same word are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, do not forget this one thing that that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Now, he says this. He says there's going to be scoffers and they're going to say, oh yeah, the world's really been destroyed, hadn't it? It's still existing, everything just like it was before. We don't believe in your God, and we don't believe He's going to do anything. And He's saying, He did it once, and He'll do it again. He's not going to use water this time. He's going to use fire. And we've been warned, just like Noah was warned, that the fire's coming, the destruction is coming. And He says, I want you to know that with God, one day is just like a thousand years, and a thousand years is just like one day. What He's arguing there is this. The fact that it's been a long time doesn't mean anything to God, because a long time to God is not a long time. He lives forever. It's just that long to God. Jesus ascended up into heaven 2,000 years ago. Do you really expect Him to come back today? Probably not. Right? I mean, we as Christians go, well, I know it could happen today, but I don't really expect it, right? It's going to come. That flood is going to come. Uh, the, well, not the flood, but the fire is going to come. The Lord is not slack concerning His promises. Some count slackness, but in long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Why hasn't Jesus come back yet? If He's coming, why just let it keep going? Well, this says because He's patient. He's long-suffering. He wants everyone to come to repentance. I know you guys here have recently had some evangelism training, right? Rusty's been doing some training about evangelism. You know why you do that? That's why you do that. Because God wants all people to come to repentance. He wants people to be saved. He doesn't want anyone to die in this destruction that's coming. But it's coming. It's going to come. Just as sure as the flood came, it's going to come. And the only thing that's going to take people out of that destruction is the same thing that took people out of the destruction in the days of Noah, and that's wholehearted commitment to God and following Him. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolving on fire and the elements will melt with fervent heat? 
He says the day is going to come when the sky is going to catch on fire. It's going to happen. This building won't be here. The bricks, the rock is going to burn. It's going to all be dissolved. It's just going to happen. And when it happens, there's not going to be time. It's going to be too late then. When the rain started falling, it was already too late. There wasn't anything you could do. You could bang on that door, but you can't get in the ark now. And the day is going to come that this is all going to be destroyed. And he said, knowing that, what kind of person should you be? If you know the destruction is coming, what kind of person should you be? I had a friend one time, we were talking about this. I preached on something like this. And he got up to make some announcements afterwards. And he said, you know, he said, I don't believe that. And I thought, wow, that's kind of strange. And he said, I don't, he said, if I really believed that, you know what I'd do? He said, the second this service is over, I'd go get in my car because I've got family in another state that aren't Christians and I'd be on my way to talk to them. He said, most of us don't really believe that. Isn't that true? I mean, that's a great point. Do you really believe this? Do you really believe that the sky's going to be on fire? And when it happens, it's just going to happen like that and it's going to be too late? And you're not going to have any other chance to get right yourself or get anyone else right with God? It's going to happen. And he says, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God. I baptized a young lady one time and she sent me a message a little while later and she said, I've been reading in Peter. And she said, this puzzles me. She said, I mean, I know the end of the world's going to come, but I can't imagine hastening, praying that it's going to come quick and it's going to happen. I don't want this day to come, she said. Well, I appreciate her honesty and the truth is most of us are kind of like that. I mean, do you want that day to come? And I go, well, you know, I'd like it to come, but you know, let me have the rest of my grandkids first and you know, live to a good old age and then die right before this happens. That'd be great, wouldn't it? But the reality is, he says, if I love Jesus and I love His appearing and I'm committed to Him wholeheartedly, I can't wait for that day to come. That day that we can, this can all be over and it's so much better there. I can't wait for the fulfillment of God's promises because of the righteousness that will be in that new heavens and that new earth when this old heavens and this old earth is destroyed and wiped away and washed away. 